Good morning. Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent and to our white gift service. A warm welcome is extended to our viewers on Eastlink Community TV and on YouTube and to those listening on CFTA Community Radio. I draw your attention to the uh, announcements in the bulletin. First, service, mission and service book fund, bookmark fundraiser, bookmarks and sets of four, hope, peace, joy, and love are on sale. The, the cost is $10 for one, one set, 25 for three sets. We prefer cash or check. All proceeds will be given to the Mission and Service Fund. Christmas cheer box packing. Monday, we are looking for volunteers to assist with the packaging of the boxes. Please see the ladies in, in uh, Hearts Hall to make arrangements. Please see your December 20, 2023 calendar for the following items. Tellers, ushers, welcomers in the kitchen duty, office closures, year-end deadlines regarding offerings, 2024 offering envelopes, food bank items that are required, and storm day procedures. We remind you that uh, coffee and conversation will be held in Hearts Hall after the this service this morning. And those are the messages. Morning, everyone. Next Sunday at 4 o'clock, the church choir and our invited readers will present our lessons and carol service on the third Sunday in Advent. And this is your special invitation to attend. The lessons and carol service was first heard in 1918 in Canterbury, England, and it's gone through many iterations since then. And here at Trinity St. Stephen's, we also have a tradition of singing the service, and for many of us, it marks the beginning of the Christmas season. This year, I've included some secular readings along with the familiar and traditional lessons that we have come to know and love, and it's our hope that this will also add to the significance in the story of the birth of Jesus. There will be an opportunity for people to leave an offering as you leave the church, and any loose offering that will be collected will go to support the Amherst Food Network. As we all know, this is a time of unprecedented food insecurity and homelessness. And this is one small way that we can try to help those in need in our community. So we would appreciate you spreading the word, perhaps sharing on your social media pages the information about the service, and it's our hope that we can have a really good congregation uh, for the service. Thanks very much. Good morning. It's awfully good to be here today. Uh, my name is Reverend Susan Gamblin, minister here at Trinity St. Stephen's. If I haven't met you and I see some folks I have not met, please introduce yourself to me after the service. We're awfully glad you're here to worship with us as we worship in Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We are all treaty people. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we begin our worship, please greet each other with a sign of the peace of Christ. 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 Peace of Christ.
O come, Emmanuel, come to us, for we are lonely for God. Come, peace of God with us. O come, wisdom from on high, lead us in the ways of knowledge and show us the paths of peace. Glorious shoot from the Jesse tree, come and bring life to our spirits, fresh, green, and lovely. O oh, rose which blooms in the snow of winter, come and give us the blessed gift of hope. O oh, bright morning star of the darkened world, come and be for us the light, the truth, and the way. Jesus our Christ, we welcome you. Come and be known among us, for we are watching for God's peace on earth. And together. This day we gather to worship you as our God, whose word is liberating and powerful, whose word took flesh and lived among us, whose word can speak peace to this warring world through your light shining through us. We welcome you, Holy One, to this service of praise. come forward. Thank you. Uh, in the event that you don't know this, you are looking at your three representatives to the Bermuda Nova Scotia Regional Council. No applause. <laughs> I definitely am not setting up for that. But I, I, I am, I'm, I could clap because I'm extremely happy that Keith has joined Susan and I in, uh, in this important role. And I also want you to see us because we take what it is that you say with us to the meeting. Uh, so please, if you have something to say to Regan, say it to us first. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Susan and Keith are going to uh, help today as we light the candle. So if you two would stand around that sheet of paper 
And uh, Keith, when we get here, you're going to be the first one. Not only are we still far from God's vision of peace and justice, we are far from the fulfillment of what we are each created to be. Last week, Gary lit the candle of hope, and he said this. He said, we come to be reshaped and transformed by the light of Christ in the world. And Reverend Donnie Johnson reminded us, we are not just on any journey, but we are on a journey of faith. And so this week, we the faithful wonder, how has God prepared for our peace? Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. Uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. What does peace look like in the new heaven and earth God has prepared for us? Peace looks like a flowing river where every living thing has what they need to flourish. Yep. Peace looks like a place where those who are weak are not afraid of those who are strong. Peace looks like good conversations around big tables with lots of different voices. Advent is the beginning of this new world, a better world, where we together can boldly build a good life together, one that includes all in the peace of Christ. Okay? And if you would light our candle, the two of you. Go ahead, both of you. We move to our affirming statement and uh, we say this together. As an affirming ministry, we are committed to be an open, friendly, and caring space and invite people of all ages, abilities, racial and ethnic backgrounds, gender identities, expressions, and sexual orientations to participate fully in our community of faith all aspects of family diversity, economic circumstances, differing abilities, and individualized needs are welcomed into the life of Trinity St. Stephen's United Church. We will join with all those who seek equity, justice, and a peaceful, compassionate, loving community for all. Okay, got a couple friends here. How are you? Come on up. How are you doing, Gavin? Are you? Good, good. So, what's, what's this all about, huh? Do you know? I bet you know. Oh, you, uh, you got some family connections who do a lot of this work, so I know that you know. So what, 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 are we kind of, what, what, what is this doing here, do you think? Yes, we're donating, That's a, and I like that word, because you know what, we're not selling bookmarks, we're giving a gift for a donation. <laughs> I like that word, donating. Okay, so what is donating? When you give something to somebody for free. Boy, oh boy, is there a definition of salvation. <laughs> it's free, yeah, boy, that, that's... It's really perfect. What, what do you think giving is? How do you give? You don't know. Oh, you're in a mood, are you? Okay. <laughs> I know you know what giving is because you also have a lot of giving people in your family, like your grandfather, <laughs> like your father, your great-grandmother, your grandmother, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. Let me see what we can do here. Okay. So... I see you decorated the tree while I, wasn't, was, while I was gone last week. Do you remember doing that? You, you were both here, weren't you? Yeah. Okay. 
Were you? Okay. I need your help again. Come on. So, last week, do you know what this word was? Uh, hope. hope. Yes. You want to try what hope is? Okay. <laughs> hope is knowing that God, as Reverend Donnie said, has our back. That's what hope is. Okay, so let's, let's put scattered these around. Oops. And what do these ones say? What do these ones say? P -p 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 Peace. Okay, come on. We're going to get you to put some more on. So, so what? So now we have two signs on our tree, and we're going to have two more come in here in a little bit. Are they going to be January? Uh, no, I don't want January to come just yet. We've got a lot of worshiping to do before that. Okay, you got him. <laughs> wow, it's already looking beautiful. And so I'm going to show you the back of these because even though the front has a word on it, this is what this is all about. It's about giving. It's giving to people who we don't even know, who haven't asked us specifically to give them something. But they let the world know they need some help. And so guess what? When we're a Christian, we're called in to help. So mission and service helps people that are your age, your age, my age, everybody's age out here, all different kinds of abilities, all kinds of different orientations. That's what it's all about. Okay, so come over here. Nope, nope, nope. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Come on up here and let's pray with me. Yeah, come on up, Dodie. Okay. <laughs> You're like my brothers. <laughs> no. My mother trying to hug my brothers. Wasn't going to happen, was it? No. Can I slip my arm through here? Okay, let's pray. Oh, God, at this time of Advent, we look for a new world, a new world where everybody has enough to eat, everybody has warm clothes, everybody has a place to lie their head at night. And everybody has the most important thing of all, and that is the love of God and the love of their neighbors. God, at this time of year, help us to be thankful in our giving and to be thankful for all that we have received ourselves. Amen. I guess I'm done. <laughs> Thanks so much. As we begin the second week of Advent, God once again comes out to meet us, inviting us to prepare for his son's coming. God never tires of forgiving us, and the liturgical cycle helps us to remember this merciful love. Please join me in our prayer of confession and words of peace. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh God. That the path among us by which your spirit comes may be made straight. Prepare among us a path of peace. The peace that comes in following your ways and opening all parts of our lives to you and sharing our gifts for your sake. The past is behind us. The future is before us. Christ is coming for me and for you. The moment of new beginnings is at hand. And the good news is, as a forgiven community, we have been gifted hope and peace, not only for ourselves, but to share with the world. May it be so. The first reading today is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. And it's from the New Revised Standard Version, updated edition. God's people are comforted. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem 
and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His re reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The second reading is from 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. But do not ignore this fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be destroyed with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening, the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and destroyed, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. The final exhortation in doxology. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you, according to the wisdom given him. Herein is wisdom. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Let us bow our heads. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together be pleasing to you, God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer. Amen. From before the beginning, God has declared the end. 
The Bible is from beginning to end the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Mark begins his gospel like a breathless messenger who is eager to make an unexpected announcement. With little fanfare, Mark writes, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then he quickly launches into his story about another messenger, John the Baptizer, who also arrives with some good news. Mark carefully situates his narrative in the sweep of salvation history by quoting Isaiah and by making sure we, the way, we see the ways in which John is identified with Elijah, the one who would prepare the way for the Messiah. The role of the one who prepares the, role, the way for Christ is a timeless and a universal one. Every fresh coming of Christ in the world has followed the work of those who in their spirits and in their lives have built roads. In the beginning is the word, always. We make Christ pass straight when we bring his creative word to a world dying for lack of it. We prepare the way of Christ when we give him leverage in our life. We prepare his way when we become a crying voice for other crying voices. When conflict seems never ending, relationships rocky, when we want to deny and pretend, the holy invites us to make space for truth telling, for turning around, for therein is the peace of Christ. We make ready for him when we help remove the things which block his entrance into our world. Things like greed, pride, and hatred. The images of hope, promise, and renewal remind us human obedience is a proper response to God's grace. Faith is first of all a gift rather than a command. It does not begin by saying, do this or go there. No, Christianity begins with the good news. Here is the gift of Christ in God. Our faith's first words are not do and go, but come and receive. And the thing is, we do not have to build the road, then wait for God to come. God has already drawn near to us, even before we prepare. God has given us everything we need. God has even gone so far as to put God's own spirit within us. God has given us the word, small w, and the word made flesh. God has provided teachers, preachers, evangelists, apostles, and prophets to help us to learn how to live by faith, how to live separated from the world by walking in the power of the Spirit. This preparing for the new things of God seldom comes without obedient human investment. That is why we have the church. We are called by God to turn and refocus on what is important, to refocus and return our attention and our affections on the things of God instead of the things of the world, and to do it again and again. John the baptizer proclaimed preparation involved repentance and confession. Repentance and confession entail facing the truth about ourselves and the systems we sustain and the changing direction of our lives together, which takes work. Who really wants to do either of those things at great cost? either in the first century or now. Thank God it is the peacemakers. In our world, the old way of greed and hate and fear are about to destroy us. We hate our enemy and we inevitably die a little ourselves. We abuse our neighbor and families and end up lonely and weary, albeit in control. Imagine us beyond complacency and beyond despair. Think of us at peace 
with ourselves, our neighbors, our created order. Because now comes a powerful new alternative prepared for you, freely given to you, or donated, as Gavin says. You can be on the side of this new newness God is now working. Think of us, think of this church also beyond complacency and despair. Our old dead habits emptied of their authority because the new has already begun. No more frightened hearts, but bodies restored, communities, families, the world at peace and praising God. Our transformation within the church is not to be some kind of private spiritual connection we have with God. As the community of believers oriented toward the kingdom of God, the church's transfer transformation is a public matter that takes place in the middle of the real world of socioeconomics and politics. I quote Karl Barth for the first time ever. When God enters history for a while, no, excuse me. When God enters, history for a while ceases to be, and there is nothing more to ask. For something wholly different and new begins, a history with its own distinct grounds, possibilities, and hypotheses. A new world projects itself into our old, ordinary world. We may reject it. We may say it is nothing. This is imagination, madness, this God. But we may not deny nor prevent our being led by Bible history far out beyond what is elsewhere called history into a new world, into the world of God. God is indeed doing a new thing among us. God is fashioning a new pattern of social relations in which privilege will have to attend to poverty, in which power will have to submit to pain, in which advantage will have to be recruited for compassion, in which old priorities will have to be repositioned in order to let in people long kept out. And our God is on the move in more ways than we can understand. Everywhere Jesus went, by his words and by his actions, he caused new alternatives to emerge. And this supernatural power from God is such that the world is at a loss to shut it down. So what do we do? In anticipation of God's very advent, we remain alert for glimpses of God's work and God's will everywhere. And we take part in it, as we did in our journey of faith in becoming an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. Advent is about being aware of the season. It's about living in the light of the season, not in the darkness. It's about watching and walking in concert with the Spirit, for that is how we will know the Prince of Peace has come to our door. Advent is about you going out in joy and peace, not despair and discomfort, about going out from old sins forgiven and turning from the regret of old decisions that have left us all scarred and wounded. Advent is the realization that everything is sacred, even the worst experiences of life. It's the silence of our struggles. It's the echo of our cry for justice and the ability to turn obstacles into opportunities. The degree of our spirituality is the extent of our peace with all that is within us and outside of us. We become Advent people when we inhabit our own bodies, know our own spirits, and insert ourselves gracefully into all that surrounds us. We become Advent people when we discern the sounds of the earth, 
recognize signs of pending destruction and speak the words of blessing and reconciliation that God longs to hear us speak. We become Advent people when we know ourselves as potential sisters and brothers of everything and everyone who has lived. We become Advent people when we find in this moment the message for today and in today the mission for tomorrow. The opening sentence of the first gospel is not, as we might expect, the good news of Jesus Christ, but the beginning of the good news. Clearly, we are invited not to merely be observers of a story, but to be in participants in the ongoing living and retelling of it. This is a not a one-off event realized in our baptisms but lifelong participation in mission, which is defined as doing what God is doing through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and the gift of the Spirit. Jesus pointed beyond himself to the one who is to come, to the Spirit who will follow and be a continuing presence in the world and among the people of God. The Holy Spirit is a gift to anticipate not only at Pentecost, but also during Advent, because it is the culmination of the whole story of Jesus Christ, God with us as the agent of our salvation. Waiting for the Savior is humbling, no matter the season. It forces us to admit that the world does not operate on our schedule or whim, and by waiting for the Savior, we have to admit the obvious, that he is not here yet. In other words, it's not one of us. Indeed, the celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. Thank God is our Advent prayer. Thank God we get to prepare, but Christ gets to do the rest. Thank God we can trust he will get here in the end. In the, carnation, in the incarnation, we know the main truth of God. God wills life. God has power for life. God will work life among us to the degree we accept Christ came to change the world through being the will of God in the flesh. Our preparation here and now is not about death. Instead, it concerns our readiness to receive new life. The good news is God's power for life will not be overwritten or overridden. Instead, it is destined to overcome the world. Amen.
Please be seated. Mission and Service provides clean water, food, shelter, medical aid, community of faith support, refugee programs, and emergency aid, both in Canada and globally. Please watch uh, as we watch, uh, unfortunately, um, the collateral damage of a world without peace is refugees. So let's take a look at this video, Making a Home for re Refugees. Right now, the world is seeing more displaced people than ever before. Refugees flee their homes when it's too dangerous to remain in their country. The uprooting and uncertainty can take a toll on physical and mental well-being. Today, I'm chatting with Chris Ann Alvarez, a refugee support staff member about how your mission and service gifts care for refugees. Hello, Chris Ann. It's really good to be with you today. What are some of the key refugee work uh, that we're doing with Mission and Service? All of the staff, um, the funding comes directly from MNS and our membership into the Canadian Council for Refugees, that's directly funded by MNS and also our SAW fee. So sponsorship agreement holder is what we are officially called and basically what that is is um, is there agreement with Immigration Canada to be able to bring them here instead of going to another organization and knocking on doors. That's very unique and it's a huge responsibility. Mission and Services prioritizing refugees and allowing for a refugee program to exist. These are huge. This means more lives being changed, more people being welcomed. Tell me, Chrisanne, about the ways that refugees contribute and enrich our communities. In so many ways, they start businesses, um, they fill job gaps, but they also take on jobs where they're able to contribute in meaningful ways through their culture as well, that they're so generous in sharing with us. In the way that they break bread with us, they welcome us into their homes. I think what people really need to know is that refugees do not choose to be refugees. There's this huge misconception that they're choosing to come here. And that's something I really want to emphasize. It's not a choice. It's something they're forced into. I remember when I first started working in this field, I, I was cautioned to not look in the comment section of news articles that are posted online because you see so much prejudice, so much racism. What is it that, what is the world you most want to see? I most want to see a world where everyone has a place they can call home. And I think we take that very much for granted here. Your gift for mission and service will help to continue refugee program staffing. Thank you for all of your gifts to mission and service. So at this time, uh, let us dedicate our gifts uh, and join in the offertory prayer as we prepare, O oh God, for the festival of Christ's birth, help us to give in expectation of his return. May our gifts be used to prepare the world for Christ's coming, when all creation will be free to sing your praise.
please be seated. Uh, we're going to be having a responsive prayer of the people today, but before we enter into that prayer, I just want to talk to you about some joys and concern. Uh, first of all, joys. Uh, thanks to Donnie for stepping in uh, last week. I watched the service and I it got done, it was finished and I, I said, you know what, I'd really like to go to that church. And I said, well, I do go to that church. It was really, really nice. Uh, and thank you all for all the well wishes I had uh, while I was not feeling too well. Um, let's see, well, another joy, Reverend Green is in the house today. <laughs> And your wife, Cheryl. Is it Cheryl? I can't, I can't quite remember. Oh, Trish. My, my former sister-in-law's name. Oh. Glad to have you worshiping with us today. Um, concerns. We have quite a few concerns today uh, that I can speak about. And that is we have Louise Small in the hospital. She has pneumonia. Yeah, we need to keep uh, her in our prayer. Another uh, one of our uh, non-Nigerians, Ivan, has COVID. And Catherine, I understand, has COVID. Um, so we really need to be vigilant ourselves uh, and also watch out uh, uh, to see if these folks need anything at all. And we keep Nancy, uh, who I believe is still in Spring Hill, uh, in our prayers, too. Um, Today the Bolton is given in loving memory of Frank and Betty Calder by Paul and Kathy. And we also make note of the sad news for Harry Wilkes that his sister Susan had died uh, last Sunday. So please uh, keep him in your prayer. Um, we pray for uh, the folks trying to figure out how to deal with the opioid epidemic and the drug issues that we have that are causing so many deaths by overdose, which we've had here in the county recently. So we need to keep, keep uh, vigilant uh, about what we can do uh, to save lives. And lastly, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that there are many of you that will be traveling over the next few weeks, and we will certainly pray for traveling mercy for you. So as I begin our prayer, uh, you will see your, your response when I do say that. Let's bow our heads. God, Father and Mother of us all, we pray in these short days of winter that this Advent will shine with the light of your countenance and herald good tidings that we may be renewed by your love. God of peace, on this day we pray for the people of Bethlehem, of Israel and Palestine, for the people who live in Ukraine and for the people of Russia, for refugees who have nowhere to lay their heads, for those who feel alone, lost, tired, and frightened. As Advent people, we wait and watch for peace. Peace in our hearts, spirits, mind, and world. We pray for those who suffer at the hands of systemic racism, bigotry, and misogyny. Restore us in right relationship, we who are created in your image, which is plural, and it is good. As Advent people, we wait and watch for peace. Peace in our hearts, spirits, minds, and We pray for those who live your peace with justice and who by example and at risk to themselves shine a light on the chasms that divide us. As Advent people, we wait and watch for peace. Peace in our hearts, spirits, minds, Grant your people strength and patience as together we seek your promise of life renewed. Inspire the rebirth of love in our world and in our lives as we rededicate ourselves 
to your ways of peace, justice, and mercy. As Advent people, we wait and watch for peace. Our spirits, minds, and With broken hearts, faltering steps, and a desire for healing with, for those who have been silenced, diminished, and objectified, we seek peace with each and all and commit to justice with our lives. As Advent people, we wait and watch for peace. Peace in our hearts, spirits, mind, and world. God of all peace, joy, and liveliness, may our celebration of the Christmas story help us to prepare for the rebirth of Christ in our hearts and in your world. Together we proclaim our faith in the coming of Jesus Christ, with whom we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Be people of peace. Share peace by acting out of compassion and not fear. Share peace by listening to all the voices crying out. Share peace by praying for the world. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who knows our pain and struggle, the peace of God, which is above all understanding, and the strength of the Holy Spirit, be with you until we gather again. Amen.